Good morning. It's great to see you all here. Welcome those who are joining us on the live stream this morning as well. As we take a look at this gospel this morning, context is in a lot of things is very important. Because we look at this encounter that Jesus is having with this woman and it seems very, very harsh that he is ignoring her and then he, he equates her to the dogs. And in that context of the Canaanite people and of this culture at this time, we need to remember that the Canaanite people were idol worshipers. They worshiped the pagan god, Baal, pagan god Baal. And this worship was sometimes very base and it was inappropriate and it was considered unclean by the Jews and it was equated with dogs that were also in the Jewish tradition unclean. The Canaanite people were very much aware of how they were considered by the Jews. And so with this background, when Jesus talks to this woman and makes reference to the dog, she understands the context and is, is really not put off by it, but accepts this characterization without malice. Instead, she offers these words that gain her great praise and a miracle for her daughter. She says, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, and even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. This Canaanite woman had great faith, as the Lord calls it. She had great faith in small treasures from God, and she asked again and again and again, willing to settle for a crumb, a small blessing, because she trusted in its value. She serves for us as a great example of humility and perseverance and faith. How many of us are willing to humble ourselves like this woman, saying, yes, I'm equal to the dogs. Yes, I'm undeserving of mercy and of so many gifts. How often would we rather use what we call today what aboutism? and compare ourselves to someone else. Well, what about that person? And say, I'm not as bad as that one. We'd rather do that than look at the condition of our own heart sometimes. And this spirit of humility is rewarded by Christ, but let's understand this does not mean that we should not realize our worth as human beings or fall into despair in order to accomplish some sort of spiritual exercise or spiritual maturity. It's meant to help us to comprehend the depth of God's love, who although we were slaves and sins to death, slaves to sin and death, that God in his love chose to enter into that very existence without sin. We can learn about this humility that we're talking about and that she exhibits from even some of our contemporary saints, Saint Silouan the Athenite, Saint Sophroni of, of, of Essex, his disciple. They exhibited this kind of humility. This humility can become a door to divine grace and God's presence. It is that small opening by exhibiting this most extreme personal humility that never abandons trust in God that can open to us this great mercy. So Saint Silouan is known to have said, keep your mind in hell, but do not despair. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that because it can be a confusing thought. Keep your mind in hell, but do not despair. One of the monks who is close to Father or Saint Sophroni now, Father Zacharias, who has written a number of books, who is a monk from Essex, spiritual son of Saint Sophroni, describes this spiritual condition as a state where we find ourselves in separation from God, which reveals to us our sin, our own sin, injustice, and spiritual poverty. 
This knowledge is a precious gift from God, which brings about the beginning of humility through our own contrition. This helps us to prepare a place for God in our souls. This contrition also affords us the courage of seeing the depths of our own spiritual poverty, yet remaining in the hope that God will have mercy upon us. This is a very important thing that we have to keep in mind as we plumb the depths of our hearts to understand our spiritual poverty, yet never, ever forget that trust and hope in God's mercy. This acceptance of our depleted spirituality through contrition helps to, helps to bring the mind of our, if it's in its natural state of union with the heart. So it brings the heart and the mind together. And this opens the door for the true experience of God. So what is required in this journey to humility is the example of perseverance shown to us in this gospel. This woman, she would not give up her asking, even when rebuffed by the Lord. The Canaanite woman had the ability to ask face to face. We, we must ask in prayer. We need to be constant in our prayer to God, relentless in asking, not so much for things, but asking for this grace, seeking his presence and offering thanks to God who knows our every need. She exhibited faith and trust, yet expected so little. Whatever she might get, she believed it would be enough, even if it was a crumb. Her humility was not about self-degradation, despair, or despondency. It was about coming to a place of absolute dependence upon God for mercy, salvation, and healing. This is the key that St. Silouan found that led him to this very presence of God and this amazing experience that he had in God's presence. Our lives in Christ is not just about any one moment or conversion or repentance or one miracle or one prayer that, or how we behave at church. It's about all of those things. It's really about what happens on the journey where humility and trust in God are our constant companions. Our search for theosis, our search for union with Christ, involves our daily life. It involves the people we meet, our family members, strangers, adversaries, all providing us with tests and opportunities to practice the virtues of Christian life. That we experience both successes and failures to find humility at the core of our souls. Jesus had encounter with people in all different places to remind us that he's willing to be in all of those places with sinners and saints, with the meek and the powerful. We need to remember to call upon him with trust and faith, never ceasing and always trusting that whatever comes from him is for our benefit. Always remembering that it is most often in the most humble surroundings that the kingdom of heaven opens up to us where we find a small crumb and we receive, that we receive from the king's table, that we find and discover that this turns out to be a spiritual gem that is truly priceless and worth everything that we experience along the journey. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.